Hey guys, it's Justin from Jacob Elk Reptiles and I'm back with another Pro Tips. So for this week's Pro Tips, we're gonna talk a little bit about ball python enclosures and the sizing and how we keep them here at JKR, we move them up from the hatchling tub all the way to adulthood. So there's a lot of controversy on the internet about the best way to keep ball pythons. I take what I do from a standpoint of the success with the animals. Plus I spent a year actually living in Africa and Benin, West Africa, where ball pythons are from. And I can promise you, you do not see ball pythons there unless you're physically digging them up. They live in termite mounds and holes in the ground. That doesn't mean they can't do good in a terrarium with lots of hides. But they really, really thrive in tight, enclosed, dark spaces. It's just like they choose to be in the wild. So I'm gonna show you guys how we kind of move them through. And we do it based on the tub sizes, based on how well they eat, how well they seem to thrive, whether or not they're pushing the tub, whether or not they're trying to get out. We try to move them size-wise based on their input to us about what they want. We find a great amount of success through it. So let's take a look at the sizes and tubs we use. All right, so we'll start with the hatchlings. We use the V18 Vision Tubs, or I think it's the Freedom Breeder also makes a version now that we use, which I think is the FB8 Tub and we use animal plastic racks. We like this size tub for the snakes and we like this rack because it's very compact. Let me show you a sample tub here. And this, this tub is from Freedom Breeder. And we have a hatchling ball python here. This is about the size of ball python, um, the largest we want it to be in this size tub. They get to be, start to outgrow to this size. It's a beautiful OD super inchy yellow belly pied. Absolutely gorgeous. And they have a water bowl system here, a water bowl set up with a little deli cup that can be changed out. The nice thing about the tub is because it is fairly dark in the back and it is lengthwise, they feel like they have a nice hiding place back here. So you almost always find them back here, um, away from the light, kind of staying back. And uh, this is an ideal tub for about 80 grams up to about 250 to 300 grams. So when they start to outgrow their hatchling tubs, um, we move them over into these Freedom Breeder, these are 10 series tubs, and these are about 8 inches by 21 inches, so they're significantly larger than those hatchling tubs. And here's just an example, this is a spot nose, GHI, NG, yellow belly, a lot of different stuff in this animal, beautiful clown. But to give you an idea, this is about the biggest that we'll keep in this size tub. So you see again, it's very it has its own little hide area in the back. It's got water here in the front that we can easily clean. It's on the crypto chip. And this is the size tub that we like up to about five, six hundred grams before we move them up to the next size. So from the yearling, we call that a yearling tub, we move them into a subadult tub. And this is the tub that they spend probably the most time of their life in because they're in here from about 600 grams all the way up to between 2,000 to 3,000 grams. And this girl right here is a desert ghost pied and she's about 1,500 grams now. Again, you see how she fits kind of neatly here in the, about the last quarter of the tub, a nice tight spot where she feels very, very secure in the back of the tub and a beautiful animal. A lot of times we'll do the very first breeding on a female in this size tub and then when she's gravid, we'll move her into a larger tub because that's a great transition. A lot of times, and this is part of the reason we keep them in smaller tubs, if I was to take this snake and move it into the next size up, which I'm gonna show you, they'll stop eating, they won't thrive because they don't feel so secure enough in it. Um, so we find the best time to move them is when they're gravid um, because they take that transition really well because after they lay their eggs, they're so hungry and they really, really do well in that transition, helps ease that transition. So the last and largest size we use for ball pythons, this is the 70 series tub. And it is much larger, it's about twice the size of the previous one. See here we have a gravid yellow belly dream sickle in here right now. Again, it feels about the same percentage of the tub. And they're really, really happy in this size, all the way up to the pretty much the biggest ball pythons you get. We rarely get one that would really outgrow this size tub. And they're, they thrive extremely well in them. So 
So that's a general overview of the sizes we use. Every snake is very individualistic and that's part of being successful in doing this, num this size collection is kind of knowing what, you, what each animal wants. And typically we find that out by literally just getting a feel for the animal. We want to try to move them up if they seem like they're not eating as well or not thriving as well, they don't seem happy if they're trying to push to get out. We're like, oh, let's move you up and see if they do better. Sometimes it's an animal will be eating and thriving and doing great. We think, oh, it's kind of big for that tub. It, is, it, must, it doesn't seem to look, it makes me feel uncomfortable to see it. So we'll move it up and it'll stop eating and it'll start to lose weight and it won't like it. And it wants to go back down to that size. And so our goal is always just to find the right fit for the animal to where it seems like it feels comfortable and it's thriving and eating and it has all the different hallmarks that we can tell of an animal who is really doing well and is not uncomfortable. All right guys, so that's how we do our caging, the different sizes we do. And it's based on about 20 years of experience and living in Africa for a while and observing them. I know there's a lot of controversy out there. A lot of people think it to be done all different ways. The reality is, is if you have an animal that's happy in the environment you created, then that's great. That's really what we want. We want them to thrive and do well. And this is what we found over 20 years works best for animals that are being kept in a little bit of volume and being kept for a breeding program. They seem to do extremely well. So thanks a lot and I hope that helps you in your own um, situation as you're trying to make decisions about the caging for your snakes and maybe you're setting it up for a breeding program and this gives you some ideas. Either way, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you again soon.